What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Kelsey's Constrictors. I am back with my pied female ball python. I have not showed her off in quite a while. I don't think I've had her in a video since I did the unboxing with her, so you can kind of see how big she has gotten. And she's super cute. She's got a dog hair on her. <laughs> So, today's video is going to be pretty juicy. We're going to be talking about the big debate. Is it cruel to keep snakes in a rack system or a tub? A few days ago, Erica from Magic City Morse tagged me in a post about a girl on TikTok who was bashing people who kept their snakes in a rack system or in a tub system. She suggested that I make a video talking about the difference in pet keepers and breeders and how the different enclosures work for the different kinds of snakes and if it's appropriate or not. So this is my video in answer to that question. Now I'm not going to name any names because I don't feel like that's appropriate to call each other out for silly petty things that don't really contribute to helping us come together as a community as a whole. But what I will say is that a lot of pet keepers bash people who breed because they don't keep their animals the same way and in their mind the way that they keep their animals is the way that everyone should keep their animals. And this is not good. It's divisive, it's judgmental, and it's arrogant. You know, who's to say that your way of doing something is the only right way to do it? Someone who is just a pet keeper doesn't have things to think about such as the amount of space it takes to raise up breeding animals, all of the hard work that goes into it, all of the cleaning you have to do when you have multiple, multiple snakes like that. If you're a pet keeper, maybe you have 10 or 15 pet snakes, that's a lot of glass enclosures. Whereas someone who's a breeder, if they have 50 snakes because they're breeding on a larger scale, they're not going to be able to fit 50 glass enclosures closures in their house. So the needs or wants of the pet keeper are going to be totally different than the breeder. If you notice in my videos, I try to be very objective about the things that I talk about unless they're absolutely necessary, such as humidity. So is it cruel to keep a snake in a tub or a rack system? Let's dive right in. I do want to say one thing real quick. This video is going to be for ball pythons specifically. The same information could be applicable to other snakes such as boa constrictors, Kenyan sand boas, Brazilian rainbow boas. There's all different kinds of snakes that this could also apply to, but just make sure you do your own research for whatever type of snake you have. Arboreal species are obviously not going to be included in this because I don't have any and I don't know a whole lot about them, but if you're concerned about your ball python or your boa not having enough places to climb, it's nothing that a little bit of daily handling can't take care of for you if you're worried about that. So first let's talk about glass enclosures. Now they look nice, but always ask yourself, am I doing what's right for me or what I want or am I doing what's best for the animal? Am I taking all of the considerations of their species in when I'm doing this or am I just concerned about an aesthetic? Now there's nothing wrong with a nice aesthetic, but the argument that some of these pet keepers are making is that anything but cluttered and aesthetic is bad or wrong, which is what I want to debunk in this video. There's a few reasons why a glass enclosure is not ideal for your snake. The biggest reason why a glass enclosure is not ideal is because it's very difficult to maintain the temperature and humidity that's correct for your snake. Here is a clip of Phoenix's enclosure and you can see that it's really dry and I have not misted it for a couple of days. I have to mist her enclosure every single day or at the very least every other day because it dries out really quick like this. There's a lot of ventilation on top. The air and the humidity can escape really easily so it's really really difficult for me to keep the humidity and the temperature right in the glass enclosure. And then here you can see it after I misted the whole entire thing. It is back to where it should be and the humidity monitor has gone back up to about 80 where it should be sitting. Glass enclosures are also incredibly difficult to clean. They have really sharp corners and edges on each side and there's really no way to get that completely totally clean unless you're using like F10 or something. But even then it's just hard to really be able to make sure you're getting in every single crevice that's in the actual enclosure. Another reason a glass enclosure may not be ideal for your snake is they may end up feeling very vulnerable because all of the sides are open around them. They feel like they can't hide and that also may eventually cause them to go off food. However, with a rack system, the entire tub is their hide because it's enclosed on every single side, except for the front part. Glass enclosures also take up quite a bit of space. They're very heavy, they're hard to move, they're easy to break, they're expensive. There's just so many things that aren't convenient about them. And another thing to think about with the glass enclosures is you're going to be using a lot more substrate because it's so much more surface area that you're having to cover. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that keeping your snake in a glass enclosure is a bad 
bad thing. And I'm just trying to give you some ideas of why some people don't prefer glass enclosures over a tub or a rack system. So let's talk about ball pythons in the wild. Ball pythons are from Africa originally and they are primarily ground dwelling ambush predator snakes. They are diurnal, which means they are most active in the early morning, in the late evening, around twilight and sunrise. And they are opportunistic feeders, which means a lot of the time they just sit and they wait for a rodent to come across their nose and then that's when they strike and eat. Every single animal in the animal kingdom has an adaptive way to their species to find and eat food. Take a cheetah for example, their strength is speed. Chameleons have their camouflage and they're very slow and they wait for their prey to be still on the branch and then that's when they flick their tongue really fast. Ball pythons are ambush predators so they mostly sit and hide and wait for their food to come to them. So when you're keeping wild animals you have to keep these things and instincts of their wild ancestors in mind when you're keeping them because instinct is very strong in animals and a lot of that stuff never goes away. Just like your dog may be the best dog in the world but if they see a squirrel or a cat they may take off running and not even hear you anymore because they're going strictly on their instinct to chase. So back to our feeding example, a rack system may be a better choice for some of your snakes. It will often increase or encourage a better feeding response because the snake feels safer in a more enclosed area, which most resembles their natural environment in the wild. So if you're going to use a glass enclosure for your snake, just make sure that there is tons and tons of places inside there where they can hide and feel safe and not like they're out in the open and can be viewed from every single side. You can even put some poster board on either side of your glass enclosure to make it only visible from the front end if you want to do that. Now if you're having trouble deciding what's the best solution for you, here's a couple of things that can help you decide. How much room in your house do you have for enclosures for the amount of snakes that you have? How much time do you have to put into cleaning the enclosures and maintaining them every single day? And finally, how much money do you have to spend on the energy it's going to take to run glass enclosures versus racks, all of the extra substrate you're going to be using in a glass enclosure versus a tub system? So those are three things that can kind of help you if you're having trouble deciding. A rack system is going to be a lot easier to clean, a lot easier to maintain, and it's going to take up a lot less space. That's the reason that I use a rack system because it's much easier to maintain the temperature and the humidity which means the snakes eat better and are happier. It takes up way less room and they're way easier to clean. So now let's talk about how much space does an adult ball python actually need. A lot of people who are pet keepers are coming out and saying you have to keep your adult ball python in at least a 4 by 2 by 2 glass enclosure and for reference that's about a 40 gallon tank. Now while I think this is a great idea and the more room for a wild animal the better, that's not necessarily something that is absolutely a necessity for that snake. You can't really put dimensions on what a snake actually needs, especially because every single one is different. What happens is people who are beginner keepers are going to be reading this information and taking it in and they're going to bring a baby ball python home and have this 40 gallon enclosure for it. And what happens is this teeny tiny little baby snake is going to feel really unsafe and vulnerable inside this huge tank. Then they they might go off food and then they might end up starving themselves to death because the humidity isn't right, the temperature isn't right, and the snake feels vulnerable inside this huge enclosure. Also keep in mind it depends on the personality of the snake. Some snakes will eat live, they'll eat frozen, they'll eat anywhere, they'll eat outside their enclosure, they'll eat in a glass tank, they'll eat in a rack. But some snakes are incredibly picky. Some snakes, if you level them up a tub size, they all of a sudden refuse to eat until you put them back in the smaller tub. As long as your snake has room to fully stretch out their body in some way, inside of their enclosure and they're eating and they're pooping and if everything looks normal everything should be totally fine. So really there is no right answer to this debate or question. The reason that I'm making this video is that I've been hearing a lot of stuff about really really arrogant people coming out and bashing other people for the way that they keep their snakes and that's really just tacky in my opinion. I mean we should all be supporting each other especially during this really really difficult time where we should be supporting US ARC and coming together, banding together because all of us are going to be affected if the Lacey Act amendments end up being voted in. So why are we nitpicking each other, breeders versus pet keepers, when we should be coming together to fight this issue so that we can all keep our animals. Also keep in mind you can do it right or wrong both ways. You can have a baby snake in a big old glass enclosure with nothing in it except for a water dish and the humidity is like 20% and that's horrible. You can have that exact same baby snake inside of a rack and they're going to thrive and do great. In the same way you can 
can have people who have great glass enclosures and they maintain them every single day the way that they should be. And then you've got people who don't maintain their rack system. One of my snakes that I rescued, I got from a girl. She kept him in a rack, but she just had him on a puppy pad. There was no humidity in there whatsoever. There was a water bowl and a puppy pad and that was it. So you can do it wrong or right either way. You just have to find what works for you. But we've got to stop bashing each other for our keeping practices that are entirely objective. Some people are going to put their dog in a kennel or a crate when they leave the house, and some people are going to let their dog roam freely while they're gone. Now, there's nothing wrong with either one of those options. The choice is entirely dependent on that person's experience with that specific animal. If your dog tore up the house every single time you left, you wouldn't leave it out of the crate while you're gone just because it's better for the dog not to be in the kennel. The dog might have separation anxiety and feel better in the kennel because it's enclosed and they feel like they're being cuddled and in a safe space. Nice and cozy until mom or dad get home. In the same way, an uncomfortable or an unhappy ball python might not eat in one scenario or another, in which case you have to do some troubleshooting to figure out what works best for that specific animal. Also, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater if you see one person doing something the wrong way or not ideal, or if their cleanliness practices aren't up to date or they're just doing things poorly in general. A great example of this is a reptile show that I went to about six months ago. There was a guy there, I'm not going to name names, but there was a guy there and he was selling a proven breeder female normal ball python for a hundred dollars. This snake looks so emaciated and just I mean, horrible. Like, the snake looked horrible. I felt bad for the snake. I was like, please give that snake a soak right now. I mean, she was just peeling all over, like, horrible shed, and she was just skinny, bony. Like, there was no meat there at all. Like, I don't know how big she was or how much she weighed when he started pairing her and she had eggs, but this snake was so emaciated. I was just absolutely blown away. So there's things like that where I could look at that and go, man, every single person who ever breeds a 1200 gram ball python is a horrible person because their snake is going to turn out like this. That's just not true. Some female ball pythons are smaller by the time they're four or five years old. They never reach 1500 grams and they breed fine. They just have small eggs, small clutches. There's nothing wrong with that. But then you have people on the other end of the spectrum who are trying to make the extra dollars or just trying to speed up their projects or whatever the case may be and they're doing things in, in bad practice like breeding them before they're ready and stuff like that. Not giving them enough humidity, enough hide boxes, humidity boxes if they really need it. Humidity boxes are actually great solutions for glass enclosures if you do have trouble with humidity. But I'm not going to judge every single breeder or every single person who is breeding 1200 gram snakes because of that one guy poor practices. So just remember that and try to come from a place of understanding as you're looking at everyone's different practices and animals. In this crucial time where we need to be fighting one fight with each other banded together with US ARC for our rights both as breeders and as pet keepers, why are we focusing on petty bullshit about whether there's a fake plant in the terrarium or the tub with the snake or not? The Lacey Act amendments, if they get passed, they're going to affect us all and we got to stop acting like middle schoolers, band together, and try and win this fight together. Snap out of your judgmental mindset, open up your mind, and listen compassionately to others who might even be doing things a little bit differently than you. It really is the only way we're going to be able to survive and continue our hobbies and businesses and be able to keep our animals. So how do you keep your snakes? Have you gotten into any tiffs online lately with people who are being haters on your channel or on your Instagram about how you keep your snakes or different practices that you use? Leave it in the comments below and I just want to say don't sweat the small stuff and remember haters make you famous. As long as your snake has room to fully stretch out their body and... Ow. So now let's talk about how much space does an adult buy... There's a lot more things you have to think about and a lot more maintenance that goes into it. Ooh.